Hello and good evening, everyone. This is the elder, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. At this time, we uh, humble ourselves before the worship of Jesus Christ. We thank and praise God for who he is. We always saw these God's grace because it is sufficient for each and every one of us. God's unmerited favor. I'm sure the Lord good. God bless you, Brother Nicholas, my good friend. And uh, truly the Lord is good. And I just want to give out a few pointers and tips on those who may be uh, studiers, teachers, authors of the word of God. When I say authors, some people have become doctors or scholars or doctors of theology who study the Bible very keenly and with such keenness. Uh, when you are studying the word and before you preach any text, you pray and ask God, is there a word for your people? Is there a word from the Father? What would you have me to say to your people? That is one of the first sentences or in your prayer. Lord, is there a word for your people? What would you have me to say to your flock, the flock, of God, the flock of God and the sheep of your pasture? We must understand that's not us getting up to entertain or twist their ears or, or um mess up their vision because every believer should have a voice to hear from the Lord. Study the history of the text. If you have a full life um, Holy Spirit, full life Bible, those are the best ones. And dates is another one. Another great Bible to study out of. And then you study the who. Who is the author? Who? When? The time frame of it? Uh, A.D. B.C.? When, aware, if it's in Jerusalem, Judea, Israel, put it on paper, type it up. How, the teachings. God bless you, Thomas Washington. Always good to hear from you, my brother. And um, how, and then when, you know, who, when, where, why, and how. Those are the five keys of principles and studying the word of God. And when you are studying the word, you must also refrain from talking on the telephone, refrain from looking at a lot of TV, a lot of uh, put on a worship song or instrumental worship so you can set the stage, so you can be keen in hearing the voice of God. Make sure you worship and praise and give thanks unto his name, for truly the Lord is good. Before you get out to study fasting, it's important as well, these three days. If somebody calls you and say, by next Friday, we want you to minister a word, whether it be a eulogy, whether it be a seminar, whether it be a three-day conference, fasting and praying should be uh, qualified for that at work, but less on this day. Now, I know you are. It's always a blessing here for you. I've always believed that time. So I hope to run into you. I haven't seen you in such a long time, a long time. And that's been since grammar school, so it will be an honor to see you. And uh, yes, yeah, so you fasting and praying will be subtle to um, fast and pray before you go forth in the word and make sure your life is consecrated with prayer. Make sure you pray before the Lord, that the Lord speak to you and minister to you and allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Seed of God to rest upon you and in you and minister to you about his people. Allow the Holy Seed of God to really talk to you. Let him be edified in you. Let him be exalted in you. Don't go in your flesh and don't try to move the crowd. Only the anointing can move the crowd. Mm -hmm. Only the anointing can break yokes, destroy fetters, lift chains. Okay. Okay, yes, we are older. But good to have Thanks. Um, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That is really nice of you. And I feel the same way about you. So we're on the same page. I was not hooked up with him. I always knew he was a good friend. I, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that in you at all. And you need good friends like that. Thanks. That means a lot. It really does. Yeah. There's not many friends that you can say that to. I accept all of it wholeheartedly. And some people don't know how to receive compassion. Yeah. 
God bless you, Apostle and Dr. Frederick A. Kelsey. God's good. Yes, he is, Thomas. Yes, he is. And when we're studying the word, make sure you're fully focused. Focus in the word. Stay focused on the text. Focus. Don't go outside. Point of the scriptures into you have finished elaborating on the text. Make sure you get your point across. But still, allow the Holy Ghost to have free course. Don't lose the people. If you have to take the words and break it down during the definitions of the word, so be it. Because every word you see in the Bible, you may not understand. Mm -hmm. You need every scripture, every word, chapter, verse. Break down those words that you don't understand. And make sure you now know how to pronounce or say several words some bible words are very difficult to pronounce mm -hmm. make sure you speak with authority make sure you speak up under the anointing make sure you're very clear in your speaking mm -hmm. make sure you're very clear and distinct and don't try to sound like somebody else the people will know if that's you or you're emulating someone else's anointing they're going to know if that's you pretending or putting on a facade. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use your, your very same voice, but ask God to anoint your voice and be sensitized to the Holy Spirit when you go across any platform or any stage or any pulpit. Make sure you're very keen and watching and discerning. When the when praise and worship is up worshiping, you should already be on the platform, not in the office sipping tea or water. Be out on that platform. Sit in a good posture. Focused. When they start praying, you pray. And don't outpray them, but pray. And when they out singing to worship, make sure you're in worship. If they dance and then you go and dance. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're intertwined with the anointing. And when you ask to minister out, you don't minister no more than 35 to 30 minutes. If there's an altar call in your labor with the people, ask some of the ministers, along with the pastor, to help pray with you with the people. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're structured and in order and know how to submit to the authority of the house. And make sure by all means that you take all your engagements and your letters to your pastor, bishop, or apostle. Take it to them so they can get the approval you, you'd be surprised what a pastor discerns from off a letter. Mm -hmm. Submit to the authority that's over you. Submit and understand. Mm -hmm. Don't go out on engagements that your pastor has not approved. That's a renegade spirit. You're wrong and you're out of order. Make sure your letter goes straight to your pastor. You have to remember this. Buffalo is very small, and pastors know pastors. Mm -hmm. That pastor that invited you will run into your pastor at the store. Someone said, oh, one of your ministers came over and ministered to us. Oh, and your pastor's going to say, oh, did he? She said, he said, and they'll say, yes. Well, rather strange. They didn't tell me they had an engagement. Pastors know pastors. And your pastor is going to call you to the office and ask you, did you minister at so-and-so-and-so's church? And you're going to say yes. Rather funny, you didn't tell me, neither did you ask my permission. So you go ahead of the Holy Spirit and not ask your pastor. That's out of order. You're supposed to ask your pastor. Mm -hmm. God bless you, Mr. Tony. And uh, we have to learn to submit to authority. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you get 20 letters. Every one of them letters your pastor has to see. And that he can improve that you can go out and minister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your pastor needs to know your whereabouts, even when you go visit and hear other speakers. Call your pastor so tonight I'm going over in such and such and such. And make sure it's not a night on, on a Bible study, night at the same time at your church. Make sure it's like on a Monday or Wednesday or either a Friday. 
When you go out to visit, make sure you tell your pastor. I learned all this through the years. And I had to learn it. It didn't break me, but it helped me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And never talk ahead of your pastor. Let him express himself and feelings towards you. Don't talk ahead of the pastor and don't try to correct your pastor. And don't let somebody tear your pastor down. Do not allow anyone to tear your pastor's name down. Mm -hmm. Stay focused. Stay subject. If you're a minister, usually ministers don't go out and preach. It's the elder and the evangelist that does. Mm -hmm. If your pastor say, come to Bible class, and he asks you to teach for 20 minutes, do 18. If they ask you to get up and do a sermonette and say 10 minutes, do eight. Do under, not over. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. My bishop did me like that, Bishop Brown. He said, Elder Newman, I want you to come up here and do a 10-minute sermon. And I stood there and froze. He said, now. And I got up and I moved and I did it in eight. He said, thank you. You're on point. That's to make me better, not to stroke my ego. Learn to submit to authority. I don't care how old you are. Mm -hmm. And make sure you pay your tithes and give your offering. Most of all, stay subject to the leader of the house. Mm -hmm. There's a points and bits and pieces and spiritual nuggets for you to know as a minister. Mm -hmm. Follow the leading of the shepherd of the house. When I gave my trial sermon, he called us into the office and told us when he was going to do it. And we didn't have to bug him or beg him. He knew that we were called. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine named David Boyd and myself, on June 17, 1994, on a Friday, he gave us three days to get ourselves together. I was at the church early that day. And of course, I was nervous. I fumbled a little bit, but the second time I did a little bit better. Trial sermon, meaning your first message. They're watching you. When you ask to help serve communion, you wash your hands first, dry it off with the cloth, serve the people. Don't talk, just serve. When he asks you to help with water baptism, you serve. When he asks you to give him read the morning scripture, don't preach. Read the scripture and go sit down. If he asks you to pray, don't pray no more than five minutes. Pray and go sit down. Mm -hmm. Do not try to do the pastor of the house. There's only one here. Like the scripture says, there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There's one shepherd over the body of, in the body of Christ in the church house. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take these spiritual nuggets and follow the leading of the shepherd and allow God to use you and lead you. This is a spiritual nugget today. And this is from Elder Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. And we will be having Bible study on today at 279 Perry Street uh, in the Community Center. And I pray that most of you will be able to come out and be blessed. God bless you all. Have a blessed day.